Hey, and welcome to BEMSIA Bot Builds for New Builders. In this episode, we'll be looking at motors for your robot drives or drivetrain. The drivetrain is just a way of describing all the components that form the drive system, such as motors, gearboxes and shafts. In combat robots, the drivetrain does more than just move the robot. It also is used to steer your robot. Combat robots don't normally use the type of steering you would find in a car, such as rack and pinion, but instead use motors on each side of the robot to steer in what is called tank steering. Tank steering is where the wheel or wheels on one side of the bot are turned faster than the wheels on the other side, and this turns the bot. If the wheels are faster on the left side, then the robot turns to the right. And if the wheels are fast on the right side, then the robot will turn to the left, just like a military tank. So when designing a combat robot, both speed and steering control need to be considered. Drivetrains generally use gear motors rather than just a bare motor. A gear motor is a combination of both motor and gearbox, which does two jobs. One is to increase the torque or the twisting rotational force on the shaft, and the second is to bring the high motor RPM down to more manageable speeds. Having a motor that spins a wheel at 20,000 revs a minute would make for some challenging driving, if there was enough torque to turn the wheel at all. So it is recommended to use gear motors for your drivetrain. The gear motor is controlled by an electronic speed controller, or ESC. The ESC is connected both a battery for power and to the radio receiver. The radio receiver receives radio instructions from the throttle of the transmitter. We go further into the details of ESCs and receivers in another video. So how do you choose the right bot speed? Well, this is where it becomes all subjective. The speed of your drive is dependent on many factors, such as the shaft RPM and your wheel diameter. Therefore, to calculate your motor speed, the gearbox ratio as well as the wheel diameter have to be taken into account. However, there are other factors to take into consideration as well, such as your skill as a driver, as faster drives are generally harder to control. Even the type of robot can influence your choice. If your bot is more about control and less about zipping across the arena, then a lower RPM may be more suitable. Even the size of the arena floor can be a factor to consider. The bigger the arena, the more speed you may want to get across it. So the following suggestions for insect classes are just that. Suggestions. Basically a place to start. A suggested RPM for 150 gram ant weight or fairy weight class would be around 4 to 600 RPM. A suggested RPM for a 3 pound beetle weight class though would be around 500 to 1000 RPM. Just remember that these are just starter guides. And also don't forget that the size of a wheel is also key. Twice the wheel circumference means twice the speed. For those excited about a bit of math, here is an example for calculating the bot speed. I won't go into this example, but feel free to pause it to have a closer look. The calculations are for a beta weight and uses a gear motor that is rated to 800 RPM at 12 volts. In this example, the final speed works out to be around 2 meters a second. For our local league, the arena is 2.1 meters across, so this would mean that the robot would get from one side of the arena to the other in roughly one second, which is pretty quick and would need some solid driving experience. For a first time driver, it may be worth selecting a slower gear motor. The motor voltage depends on how you are powering your system, but for a standard 150 gram bot that uses 2S or 7.4 volt LiPos, then you would be looking at a 6 volt gear motor. For a beta weight running on 3S 11.1 volt LiPos, then 12 volt gear motors would be suitable. When sourcing a motor, keep note of the stall current or max current, as the ESC or electronic speed controller will need to be able to cater for this. If the stall current for the motor is 7 amps, 
Then, an ESC to control that motor would need to cater for the 7 amps plus maybe a little wiggle room, which means the selected ESC would likely be around 10 amps. Make sure you know how your motor is to be mounted. There are a number of different options here, and three of those include bolting the motors into the side of the wall, using specialised off-the-shelf holders, or even maybe 3D printing your own. When purchasing a gear motor, it is always wise to consider how are you going to connect the wheel to the shaft, and there are many mechanisms. Two possible ways include firstly clamping directly onto the D shaft, which is more for the 150 gram class, and secondly, using grub screws that are tightened to hold the wheel to the shaft. Be aware that there are many other mechanisms, especially for the bigger weight classes. Historically in combat robotics, brushed motors have been seen as simple, cheap, and a very reliable option. However, they are slower and heavier than their brushless counterparts. Brushless motors, on the other hand, are more complex and need more complex controllers, and because of this, they are regarded as less reliable. But they are lighter, have a much, much higher power output, and a high speed range, and have better thermal characteristics, so generally much more bang for your buck. Today, brushless motors are cheaper, and far more reliable than they once were, and are becoming far more accepted for combat robotics. And while gaining popularity in drive systems, they are already very, very popular for weapon motors. Generally you can use either a brushed or brushless motor for a robot drive, or drivetrain, but unfortunately there are not a lot of gear motors available that include brushless motors. Most insect class gear motors available are brushed, although this is changing. So, for reasons of simplicity and the current availability of gear motors, it is probably easiest to start with a brushed gear motor in your first robot's drive rather than a brushless. There are quite a number of brushed gear motors to choose from, and a number of these are listed in the table of suggested gear motors and suppliers below. So that's all we have for this episode. Don't forget that all the details of the options are documented below. Please check out our other episodes, including an introduction to electronic speed controllers, or ESCs, which you will need to run your drivetrain gear motors. Thank you for watching, and see you in the arena!